we're going to look at the fitting of the chromium 2p3 halves peak and the big thing with the transition metals is that there's something called multiple splitting that can occur this happens when a, a, a compound or an ion has unpaired electrons so for example chromium 3 is 3p6 3d3 so it has three unpaired d electrons and what happens is when you get a core electron vacancy made by photoionization you get coupling between the unpaired electron in the core and the unpaired electrons in the outer shell and this shows up as a number of final states which you see in the photoelectron spectrum so instead of a nice single peak for chrome 3 we get this multiple split structure that shows can be fit with five peaks actually in general the literature for chromium 2p has not been very good um, there's been many misinterpretations of the literature including some of the common databases which quote uh, a single peak binding energy for compounds that are known to have multiple split peaks um, the multiple peak structure has been improperly assigned to chemical shifts for example the papers have claimed that there's chromium 2, chromium 3, chromium 4 and chromium 6 where only actually chromium 3 is present and some of the some of the issue may have been resolution of the older XPS instruments and some of it is just not an understanding that uh, multiple splitting is occurring if we look at the standard spectra from the various chromium compounds we see that for pure chromium oxide chromium 3 oxide we have this nice multiple split structure as we talked about before that can be fit with five peaks for chromium hydroxide or hydrated chromium oxide we get this broad peak that has a full width half max of about 2.5 eV so we can fit that with one single peak and for chromium 6 species which don't show multiple splitting because they don't have any unpaired electrons we get the very well-defined sharp single peak so we can come up with a set of chromium 2p3 halves fitting parameters for the chromium 6 species uh, we can set one narrow peak of a full width half max of around 1.5 eV at a range from 579 to 580 eV. For chromium 3 species, the chromium hydroxide will be one broad peak with a full width half max of about 2.5 eV. For chromium oxide, we're going to have five multiple peaks of equal full width half max with set areas and separations that are based on the standard sample. So we're going to use these constrained peaks to mimic the shape of this multiple split peak. And for the chromium metal, we'll have one asymmetric peak that will be used for that. And if we look at this table, this kind of spells out exactly all the different peak separations, the peak positions, the area ratios that you can use for different full width half maxes for different pass energies. And this is from these papers down here below, and this is also on the website, which I'll put a link to. So in CASA XBS, we can set up a bunch of constraints to mimic all these peak shapes that we talked about. So we see we have our chromium hydroxide, uh, this large uh, purple peak here, has a full width half max of around 2.5 eV, and set at a binding energy of between 577.4 and 577.2 eV. For the five peaks for the, the multiple split structure of the chromium oxide, uh, we start with our peak, our first peak, and we constrain everything to that so you can see how the full width half maxes are all equal to that original peak, uh, and the positions are all based off of where that peak is, as well as the areas are all ratioed to that initial peak. And for the metal, we have an asymmetric peak shape and its position, although it's easy to tell here because it's well resolved, um, its position is set between uh, the, the, the settings that we talked about before. If we look at another finished example, we can see that what we do to get the amounts of the different species is just add up the five peaks, the area of the five peaks, to get the chromium oxide we have the area of the peak for the chromium hydroxide and in this case we have some chrome 6 showing up now the one caveat with chrome 6 is, is because it overlaps significantly with the chrome 3 species we generally say we want to see at least a peak of 5 to maybe even 10 percent in peak area before we can really confirm that yes there is chrome 6 there because sometimes it'll it'll fit in a peak for chrome 6 
you know, at two or three percent, depending on the noise in the spectrum. And that's not really strong proof that uh, that it's chrome six is there and not just part of the multiple split structure of the chrome three species. And that's what we have for chrome uh, chrome fitting. The other other transition metals are similar. We're we're taking peaks from standard spectra and fitting them into the spectra. So for things like iron, manganese, nickel, and cobalt, they all have these sorts of structures where we have uh, multiple split peaks for the various species within each transition metal. And all that kind of stuff is, is on the website.